Welcome to this Library and Learning Resources bite-sized induction session on comparing sources of information. This video is a very short and basic introduction, giving you the skills you need to get started in your first few weeks at university. The Information Skills Librarian team will provide lots more teaching across your degree program, but we will also signpost lots of extra resources at the end of this presentation if you would like to learn a bit more now. The key learning points for this session are to understand the difference between a scholarly or academic information source and a popular information source, and therefore why it is important to use scholarly sources when reading, researching or writing your university work. By the end of the video you will also be able to identify the purposes, strengths and weaknesses of different scholarly information source types, which include books, journal articles and good quality online materials. So let's start by addressing learning point one. What are scholarly resources and how do they differ to popular resources? When you write an essay or assignment at university, you will use research or literature created by others to answer a question or form an argument. It's important that you use scholarly sources when you do this as these sources prioritise elements such as research quality, objectivity and evidence to produce accurate knowledge for the discipline. Scholarly sources include the books and e-books you find in academic libraries, including LSB used libraries, journal articles published in subject journals, and some online materials such as reports, guidelines and data, for instance materials on the UK government website. By comparison, popular information sources prioritise making information accessible and interesting for readers. For example, newspapers, social media posts and for-profit company websites. These sources may be biased to a particular agenda, make unfounded claims or sensationalise elements to make them seem more impactful. You should avoid using sources like this in your research because they can decrease the accuracy and reliability of your work. Let's look at the qualities of scholarly sources in a bit more detail. Some of the many reasons academic sources such as books, journal articles and some websites can be considered good quality include the fact that they are written and published by experts in a subject area by people like your tutors who contribute to research as well as teaching it at universities. The sources are peer-reviewed, which means they are read and evaluated by other researchers before they are published. The sources represent the most up-to-date research available. Ideas and practices change all of the time, and this can have a profound impact in some disciplines, such as health. As mentioned on the previous slide, scholarly sources follow a rigorous and controlled research process. They draw conclusions based on data or evidence collected, and the researchers take steps to avoid bias, which can lead to inaccurate conclusions. So now I'm going to talk you through three of the key scholarly information types you are likely to use in your time at university. We'll look at the general purpose of each source type, and when you might want to use it in research, as well as some of the strengths and weaknesses the source has. Let's start with academic books. Both print and ebooks usually provide either a general introduction to a subject area or an in-depth discussion of one particular topic. For information to be printed in a book, it is usually considered to be established or widely agreed as accurate. This makes them very useful for understanding the key points in a topic area. Books are often broken into different chapters that might be more or less relevant to your research area, and many will also have an index that allows you to find specific words or phrases or topics quickly. However, whilst they often contain lots of theory, books will rarely point to data or case studies, because these will go out of date very quickly. Indeed, the publishing process for a book is quite long, so all of its information could be slightly out of date by the time it hits the shelves. This is worth remembering when you are using them. 
Meanwhile, journal articles are shorter pieces of literature, often focused on one particular topic or case study. Depending on the discipline, they read more like a long essay or a structured report. Journal articles are published constantly, meaning they represent cutting-edge research in the discipline. Often, journal articles will be producing data or looking at previously unstudied elements to propose new findings. We have mentioned already that articles are peer-reviewed, which means they are good sources to use in your academic work. They also provide specific data and case studies that will help you to answer a question or make an argument in your own essays. However, journal articles can be very detailed and specialised and occasionally they can use a lot of technical terminology that makes them difficult to understand. It's definitely worth using a book to get to grips with the basics in a topic area and then using journal articles to further your understanding of specialist research. Another complication with using journal articles for research is the sheer number of them available. There are millions of articles in our LSBU subject databases, and finding what you need takes some time and skill. This is something that we will teach you as part of your degree programme, so don't worry, but it is worth noting that finding relevant literature is sometimes more problematic than it first seems. Finally, let's look at scholarly online content. The purpose of online materials such as reports, guidelines, data and so on is to make rapidly changing information widely accessible. By publishing some types of information, for instance population data, online, we are able to change it quickly and therefore keep it up to date. This would be much more difficult, if not impossible, to do if the data was being printed in a book or a journal article. The benefits of using online information is that you can draw on the most up-to-date figures and evidence in your essay. It's also usually free and easy to access on the internet, for example, government or institutional body websites. However, in this case, the advantages of online information can also be disadvantages. Even when it is easy to update a website, old information may not be removed or replaced. Similarly. When information is freely available on the internet, you cannot always be sure who has created it and for what purpose. It is very important that you evaluate the quality of a website or online resource before you use it. That's the end of this session. We hope you found it a useful introduction. There is lots more help and resources available on our web pages, and we also offer support in the form of teaching within your program timetable bookable skills workshops that run throughout the year, and one-to-one -one appointments with a librarian. Find all the details on the new student induction guide. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.